Now, before we start looking at the much more interesting IES type of light, that's not IES as in Integrated Environmental Solutions, but that's an IES light file that loads in. So, so it gives it a specific uh, pattern when it uh, washes down a wall, etc. So there's all sorts of different um, up light and down lighting effects that can be had with various different uh, IES light files, which I'll come to later on. But it's this one we're going to look at for the moment. Um, this is the spotlight. Now I've changed this uh, ever so slightly. Um, I've added some uh, spheres. Now these aren't created in SketchUp as such. They are created using this um, V-Ray sphere option. So click on that, click and drag, and you create a much more um, smooth uh, circles. It's got many more sort of surfaces than the circle one. Uh, you could make your own, but uh, that's a much quicker method of doing it. Um, we've got everything rendered. Now the render times on this are over two minutes, so I'm not going to be sort of pressing a button as readily as I did in the previous ones, but uh, we'll also chop it short. So it'll be a, you'll see the sort of start of the render and I'll just jump to the finish bit. Um, the render looks like this. Okay, it's a bit dark, um, but I've created these translucent and reflective um, spheres so that we get a sense of the reflections coming off when we start adding the um, spotlights. So the first thing I'm going to do is to turn off all the current lights and just make sure that in my options that hidden lights are turned off and everything else is okay. I'll just check my system to make sure I've got that much for my rendering and then I'll hide that lot oops I've lost something in that group there and hide that so there's our room back so if I render this now I've got some spheres I've got no other lights showing we should have nothing and we have it Okay, so I'll just stop that. Okay, so things to know about spotlights. This is the icon that uh, you need to create a spotlight and click on that and then just somewhere in the scene, just click and then you get this spotlight thing appear. Okay, it's quite big when it comes in. Now, the first thing I want to determine is to whether size matters from the spotlight. I'm not actually sure. I don't think it does. Um, so we'll just start off by just checking where this is so if we go to scene three no scene two um uh, the spotlight's beyond my section cut plane so let's go back to scene one and just just move this down ever so slightly and try again with scene two so there's our spotlight looking rather large if i move that so it's sitting kind of directly over this and sketchup has that ability to snap to surfaces and planes so just move it in the green and red directions and then you should be okay so let's just go back to scene one i'll move it back up a little bit so it was tucked in like that you've got to expose this bit but you can hide the other bit and let's just hit render so there we have it um the one spotlight on there what i forgot to do was update the scene so when I went back to scene one all the lights came back on but I've now turned them off and updated scene one so this is what we've got we've got the spotlight which clearly you can't see um, and then that very sharp edged um, shadow that's been generated but what about the size of the spotlight let's see whether if we change the size of the spotlight this reduces just bear in mind it's filling up of at least half this orb and it's almost a semicircle on that so scale this and if I take the this one of these this corner one here and control I'll just be able to I think it's shift and control there you go and take it right down to that point and let's go to scene two again so we can see it that's okay scene one and then we'll just move this back up. So this is a fraction of the size that it was. Take 
it back up to about there. Back to scene one. So I say fraction of the size. Let's see what happens if we render this. And I think we can see from this bit that uh, there is no change in the shape of that light. So I'll just cut that short. And so if we want to change the amount that the light sheds, then we've got to look at um, some other functions of this spotlight. So I'll just close that down and then we'll right click on the spot, V-Ray for SketchUp, Edit Light and start looking at some of the settings that we have here. So normal stuff enabled, um, intensity 30 default value scalar. So we know a little bit about that as well. This is what controls the cone and the penumbra angle. Now there are on the help files um, examples of what values you need to set to get sort of different um, uh, shadow sizes on these. But, but I'll go through some of them. <coughs> sizes aren't massive, by the way. We're not looking at 45 degrees or anything. Um, they are sort of points of an angle. So if I go for point five of my cone, and we'll leave the penumbra at zero for a second, and then let's see what happens. What I'm expecting the cone to do is reduce down in size, okay? And also the distance from which it is at the source. So the angle's coming from this point. So the further away it is, the further the spread of um, the cone. I'll say okay to that, and then we'll render out again. And now we can see that there is a lot less going on with that cone. So before it was coming right out here, now it is much tighter in on these orbs. Okay, and you can just about see sort of the thing happening on the ground. So that is significantly shorter, it's half the size in fact, all the way around. So let's turn that off. Right click again, let's have a look at some other settings, edit light. So if I took this down to 0.25, we would expect it to be a much narrower angle again. Let's just do a quick, and there you go, even smaller. Okay, so the cone angle is the thing that changes um, the angle of the light. Right click, edit light. Let's whack it up. It was on one. Let's whack it up to two and see how far it goes. So we were expecting it to come out sort of this much now. And there you go. Okay. Almost fills the room. So we don't want to see that. Now, move it back to one. So it was quite big and let's just move this down so about here so what I'm expecting now is it to come back here again and lo and behold it does so hopefully you've got a sense of what's happening with that light okay the angle is going to determine the amount that comes off from that center point and then the distance away from it also makes a difference because the angle's either going to be out here somewhere or down here somewhere. Okay, so the angle stays the same, it's just the distance away from the object. Hope that's clear. Close that down. Let's move this back up to there. So let's have a look at the other value then. So back into the light settings. Let's have a look at the penumbra angle. Now, I seem to recall that this is like 0.1s, 0.2s, 0.3s. So if you go for 0.2, and we'll just give it a render after we've said OK, and then just see what happens. I can't quite remember what happens. It softens it, I think. That's what's happening. So you've got... A softening of the edge of that light. It 
just about. So the shadows are quite harsh. So again, the shadow settings need to be sorted out so we can get a softer shadow. This penumbra is now looking a bit smoother, but it is casting its light further away. So right click, edit light, penumbra of 0.5. Is that going to make it bigger or is that going to make it smaller? Much bigger. So let's turn that off. Right click, edit light. Let's try 0.1. And see what we get. <clears throat> That's given us a softening. And it's round about the same sort of size, slightly bigger than previously. And then the next thing I'm going to do is give it a 0, 0.0 um, value to see whether that gives us uh, anything different or whether I could strain to 0.1s and 0.2s. So right click, edit light. 0.05 and then OK and then render so that has given us a bit more of a, a soft edge on this and has barely affected the cone angle in the process so I'll just quickly render this out so we have got a little bit of a softening of the edge not a huge amount the shadows are still uh, sharp but it does look a little bit nicer than the very harsh um, edge that we had with the penumbra value set to zero so when we come to the smoothing out the shadow uh, right click we need a high value okay not just ones or twos or threes but this is 200 and this gives us a shadow that looks a bit like this so fives ones twos to fives they don't make any difference whatsoever I think when you get to about 10 15 um, it starts to sort of blend in a little bit but uh, you've got to be careful about that so this penumbra value needs to be quite um, low and the shadow value needs to be sort of high um, there are some other effects that you can have with your spotlight and this is the barn door effect. Now, a barn door is basically the, um, if you imagine, sort of a fin on each of these four surfaces, even though there's more than four surfaces. But you've got one coming forward, one coming back, one right and one left. And these can be sort of held open. So they're restricting light or they're opening light out into different um, directions. So if I turn the barn door on and let's go 10... 30, 20, and 15, and say OK to that. Let's see what sort of effect that has on everything else. What I'll also do is take that blurriness of the shadow down to zero. And we'll leave everything else as it was. OK, so just render that out. doesn't seem to have made a huge amount of difference on this but um, there are imaginary plates on there that uh, could be adjusted to change the sort of light spill so again experimenting with the angles of that um, would be a useful thing to do or have a look at some of the help files that are available for the uh, V-Ray lights. So as I mentioned earlier you can't see the light so the bit pointless having spotlights when there's nothing to um, see that's generating the spot. So in the next um, video I'll show you how you can apply a spotlight to, that's up to a manufacturer's uh, specification.